Bei unserem nächsten 70-jährigen Patienten besteht ein Longsegment Barrett Oesophagus. Eine auswärtige Histologie ergab den Verdacht auf eine hochgradige intraepitheliale Neoplasie, was allerdings durch einen Referenzpathologen nicht bestätigt werden konnte. Zur nochmaligen Beurteilung stellt sich der Patient jetzt in unserer Klinik vor. Professor Bergmann und Professor Alescher werden uns jetzt das strukturierte Vorgehen zur Beurteilung des Barrett Oesophagus zeigen. Jack Hans, good morning. You are on the screen. Good morning. To show you this Barrett's case, if you have, I see you have endoscopy and we're in the stomach and maybe Hans, I just do a slow, slow pullback just yeah. to and, and not comment on anything. Yeah. Patient is on the proper full sedation and I'm trying to inflate the esophagus. There's a small cap on the scope. It helps me to stay stable if I want to do a more detailed inspection. But this is probably what I do first, just do a very slow pullback, trying to expand the esophagus and find and try to find an area that looks most suspicious. I'm not so At sure at this level, about this level here because it's slightly elevated. Slightly elevated, right? Yeah. Well, a good way to look at things if they're slightly elevated is to use NBI because MBI in overview gives you more relief. In all fairness, we, we have been cleaning this esophagus and looking at it, and we, we've not found this, but this is, at first glance, this is a visible abnormality. Aber vielleicht schauen wir zuerst mal noch mal die Pragklassifikation an. Okay. Ich glaube, das ist vielleicht ganz instruktiv, dass man noch mal festlegt, wie die Pragklassifikation bei der Barrett, beim Barrett genau gemacht wird, bevor wir uns diesen Lokalbefund zuwenden. Der wichtigste Punkt ist ja sozusagen zunächst mal das distale Ende festzulegen. Da heißt es ja immer Ausläufer der Magenfalten. Ja, yeah, so that what we then do is go to the stomach, find the diaphragmatic pitch. So that's here. Yes. If, you, if you're in doubt, you just pull back a little bit and then it should move with respiration. So it tells you that you're above the diaphragm. So this is the hernia. Yes. And this is diaphragmatic pitch at uh, 39. And then we okay. pull back and we have to see where the gastric folds end. Also ich finde es ganz wichtig, zuerst die Zwerchfellschlingen festlegen, dann schauen, wo ist der oberste Auf Ausläuferpunkt der Magenfalten. Der wäre ungefähr... Ungefähr her. Ungefähr her. Also das wäre jetzt das distale Ende der endoskopischen Barrett-Ausmaße. Äh, so when we see that, then we have to advance the endoscope until we're at the same level. Okay. And so that's about two centimeters above that. So it's 30, about 37. 37. Also 37 is sozusagen distales Ende. So and jetzt geht man sozusagen zurück. Und dann nächste Landmark wäre ja sozusagen dann die zirkuläre Ausprägung. Das ist eigentlich, wenn man die like hier, hier, das wäre jetzt. 33, 33 cm. Ja. Und dann die maximale Ausprägung, so maximal extension of the tongues, das wäre hier bei 30. Dazu ja. lohnt es sich, NBI zu nehmen, weil man dann sozusagen das nochmal besser differenzieren kann. I don't think it's really an issue if, if it's up to here or up to there. This also. is about a 6 to 7 centimeter long Barrett segment. It's a C4M6 or C5M7, something like that. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's a matter of, so the pullback that we did was with white light. Our, our attention got drawn to this lesion here now at the 9 o'clock position. It then makes logic to take a detailed inspection with white light. And then I always would switch to NBI to take a closer look to see if there's any irregular patterns in there. And it's not like this jumps at you as if this would be clearly a cancer okay. or a dysplastic lesion. So then maybe switch back to white light and make yeah. sure that we're actually inspecting the area that we picked up in the first place. Okay. And it is indeed still this slightly, this is, so we found this based on the relief, yes. a slight mucosal difference in height, okay. which in overview is probably the most uh, logical thing to first look at. 
Okay. And then a detailed inspection of mucosal patterns with this Olympus 190 endoscope and the nearby focus is so easy. And you see the, the effect of the cap. You see, you see the esophagus is moving with heartbeat, but yes. my cap is fixing me onto the mucosa. So most of this movement is actually dampened by the cap. Okay. So the focal distance stays the same. So we can do, just do a quice and night inspection. How do we deal with this? So this patient has dysplasia, confirmed dysplasia by a pathologist. He has a very long segment Barrett, so that's also a risk factor for progression. Okay. I think the indication for treatment in a case like this is already made even before the patient has swallowed the endoscope. We know okay. that we have something that will, even if it's not visible dysplastic, he has dysplasia in there somewhere a long segment Barrett's and a life expectancy of at least 10 years. Patients like this will progress to high-grade dysplasia or cancer within, tw within two years with 25%. Mm. Confirmed low-grade dysplasia or even high-grade dysplasia. The bottom rule is anything that's visible, abnormal, take it out, okay. reject it. It's on the edge of are we going to ablate this knowing where this is and we come back and we can take a closer look even after the ablation at three months. Whatever I teach is, if you see a lesion like this, in a barrage like this, it needs to go out. So we will do a delineation and resect these two lesions, very subtle, with a duet procedure. Thank you very much for yeah, this excellent yeah. demonstration. In den beiden Resektaten vom gastroesophagealen Übergang zeigte sich eine Barrett-Mucosa mit Ausläufern einer hochgradigen intraepithelialen Neoplasie. Ein invasives Karzinom war nicht nachweisbar. Zu unserer nächsten Endoskopie-Live-Veranstaltung darf ich Sie recht herzlich am 27. und 28. April 2018 nach Berlin einladen.